G'day guys, uh, Reckless here with another Armor 3 tutorial video. Uh, today I'm going to show you step by step how to set up and sort of configure your very own Armor 3 dedicated server. Uh, this is primarily going to be through a rented service, um, something similar to Streamline servers, Valaya, GameServers.com or something like that. Um, basically for people who are just starting to watch the video, the, this is sort of more for groups that are probably larger than five in size. Um, anything less than five people, you can probably host a game pretty safely on your own PC. You'll probably get a bit of lag if you start spawning in too many groups through Zeus or something like that, but you'll probably find that most missions off the Steam Workshop, um, the Apex campaign and a number of other things will probably run perfectly fine with just five people. Um, so effectively people who are looking at renting a dedicated server, um, they're probably looking at growing their group from probably sort of five to ten, then to fifteen and, and onwards, um, and, and probably uh, uh, and renting a server is actually a very affordable and, and sort of a low barrier to entry to actually set up yourself a server rather than having to buy an additional PC. Um, of course, renting a dedicated server as opposed to buying a server means you don't have to go out and buy a dedicated machine. Um, you, as a clan leader, you don't need to have the best internet in the world to have everybody connect to you, or you don't have to have somebody in your clan who has um, sort of fiber or, or, or particularly good internet or a particularly good spare machine. Um, and of course, uh, you know, you, you can, uh, all, all the back end sort of stuff and all the technical sort of stuff is actually taken care of by your server provider. So if you actually ever have any technical problems rather than you having to figure them out, you can actually just send them an email and just say, hey, I've got a problem with this. And provided they're a good company, they'll get back to you pretty quickly and, and fix the problem for you. Um, now, for sort of smaller groups who do want to do some larger stuff, um, you, you might be able to get away with um, running a program called TATST. Um, I'll put the description, uh, the link in the description of the video. Um, again, TATST is a um, dedicated server program that sort of allows Armour to run parallel to your own game on your own machine. Um, sort of the problem with that though is that it uses your machine's resources and stuff like that um, while you're trying to play. So if you don't get particularly you know, awesome frames in multiplayer as it is now, try running effectively two versions of Armour, uh, not to mention the stress it puts on your internet. So, you know, I mean, uh, you can actually rent a dedicated server for as little as a dollar per slot. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the it's in most cases, if you have a, a, a reasonable size group of friends, um, it's better off just renting a server. Um, myself uh, and my group, Flying Monkeys in Space, we use a server provider called Streamline Servers. Um, now, I'm not affiliated with them. I don't, I'm not necessarily endorsing them or anything like that at all, but they suit at my group's budget. Um, the amount of slots and, and the performance of the server is, is, is very, very reliable. Um, but however, the interface that we're going to go through and the setting up of a rent, uh, rented server, you'll actually find the interface and how it all works is I, almost identical across the board, whether it's Valaya, GameServers.com, um, Streamline Servers, Wombat Servers, or, or any, of the other, any of the other hundreds of servers out there, server providers out there, they actually all have an interface very, very similar to this. Um, and Armour is basically a pretty standard game, and, and I'm going to show you how to run through everything. Um, one thing I will say though, when selecting a server to rent from, you pretty much do get what you pay for. Um, somebody who's charging more along the lines of a dollar per slot or less for an armor server, you're probably going to be more frustrated with them and spend more time tech, uh, on technical support than actually playing armor. Um, however, it might not necessarily mean you need to go out and pay $2 or $2.50 a slot. Um, Maybe finding somewhere in the middle is something really, really good. Um, another thing I'd recommend if you are just starting out looking at renting servers is grow your slots with your clan. Uh, don't go out and rent a 20 slot or a 30 slot or a 40 slot server straight off the bat unless you're looking at rapidly building a Altus Life or a King of the Hill server. If you're looking at just hosting missions or custom scenarios with some friends and stuff like that, get the bare minimum amount of slots. Make sure you like the server and, and grow your server with people who are joining. So um, once you are regularly getting, you know, if you go out and rent yourself a minimum of 16 slots, which is through Streamline Servers, Streamline Servers, the, the minimum amount is 16 slots. Lots. Um, you know, once you regularly are getting to 14, 15, and 16 players, regular games, and even to the point where you're having to turn people away, then start getting more slots. Uh, if if you go out and buy 20 slots and you're only getting six people to a game, you're literally throwing money down the tubes. Literally throwing money down the tubes, and 
with all servers, you can actually upgrade your server um, immediately. Like it, you can add slots like just straight away. Anyway, um, regardless of whatever service you're with, you, you are with, like I said, you're going to have an interface very, very similar to this. So um, effectively, across the top, you're going to have your, your IP and port. Um, around this part of your screen, you're going to have um, the name of your server, uh, the connection info, which is connection info, again, which is the IP and port. And then the other most important number here is your, um, your FTP address. Uh, so that's this here. Um, now, different server providers are going to have different features. This is basically what it what you're paying for is different features and stuff like this. And I'll run you through what they basically all mean. But the effectively the most important to initially get set up is your configuration files, your command line manager, your Steam update, um, and if your if your provider has a mod manager, that is that makes things really really simple as well. Um, but anyway, upon starting up your server, the first thing you're going to want to do is configure how it looks to the rest of the world. So simply click on your configuration files or or, or something that looks like that. Now you're going to get uh, three config files that you can edit here. Uh, the basic one I never really touch. There's nothing you really need to do. Um, but what I do is I do come into the Archon config and you can actually open that up here. And then once it's open, I like to actually turn my max ping up. Now I will say with, with my server, it's a private server for myself and my friends. Um, I don't necessarily need to kick people with a high ping. And the reason why I have it set to 2000 is because every now and then players are going to get a lag spike, whether it's somebody opening YouTube uh, in their house, um, whether it's just a, a bad internet connection or something like that. Um, every now and then the odd player gets a, a, a ping spike and you don't want them getting kicked off your server in the middle of a game just because of a, a freak very, very quick um, uh, lag spike. So I have mine set to 2000. Of course, if you ha are running, you know, a public server for uh, King of the Hill or Altus Life or something like that, uh, having it set to a lower figure, probably around 500 is, is probably something that's going to be a little bit more acceptable. Um, other than that, uh, you're going to have your server config uh, file down here. Uh, and if you click on text editor here, this is basically the meat and potatoes of all the settings for your server down here. Um, so of course, you've got your host name here. This is how it's going to appear in the server browser. Um, it can be as long as you want, but it will only show X number of characters. I actually have a feeling uh, this title here in the current version 1.62 which is the apex release is actually too long uh, but i haven't really had a real good look at it uh, underneath that there you're going to have your password um, so right now i've got the i've got no password at all um, but you know you can put in a password um, you know goody or something like that you know and then once it's saved people have to type in that password to, to join your server so again it comes down to whether your server is going to be private or a public server um, also one thing you can do as well on any setting that you see below you can actually edit them out by putting two forward slashes in front of them there and that will actually anything that's written in here uh, or after it will actually um, cancel it out and it won't um, it won't be used whoops Um, the next one here is of course your admin password. So this is uh, the password that you're going to use yourself to log in to either select a mission or change settings in the mission, effectively being as an admin. So you can set whatever that wants to be there. Uh, now, if you're renting a server, you don't really want to mix, you don't want to mess around with uh, the the maximum number of players because this won't actually save. If it's a decent enough provider that's not a backyard job, uh, it won't change or, or set up or anything like that at all. Just leave this as is. Um, now your voice chat again comes down to the type of mods or the type of server that you're running. Um, personally on our server, I disable the voice chat. That's the, the caps lock chatting because we use Task Force Radio and TeamSpeak to chat on our server. Um, again, of course, if you're running a public server, you might want to leave that enabled. Um, but zero uh, means it works. One means Means it's disabled. Um, then of course after that is the codec quality. Um, by default it is set to 10 which is 8 kilohertz, a narrowband uh, setting. Um, you can turn that up to improve the quality uh, in game but keep in mind that uh, every single time somebody's talking that's using more bandwidth from your server and stuff like that. So you can have a play around it play around with it depending on the machine that you're uh, you're running on. Um, voting just simply has to do with um, people who whenever people know 
admins are in? Do you want just public people joining to be able to uh, set missions and play missions without logging as admin? Uh, me personally, I'd just like to leave it on as one, so that means um, uh, my clan members can join into the server whenever they like and uh, and run missions that they like. Um, the welcome message of the day, I'm sure you've all seen it before, uh, whenever you join a server. Um, you uh, you know it'll pop up with these different messages here um and then of course your mod interval here so effectively between each exclamation or each inverted commas rather um that's the time delay uh now actually every time you put in uh inverted commas and a and a uh, comma um it will actually add an additional 10 seconds uh in it there so if i actually leave it like that you don't actually have to format it like this i just like to um but uh if you yeah if you put another one in there there's actually an additional 10 seconds between this one showing up and this one showing up um moving down to sort of your mission cycle if you want to set up um, a persistent mission every time the server restarts um, logging, it basically is just the name of the logs that's going to be saved onto your server. Again, I don't really touch any of the stuff. Um, security is pretty important. Again, depending whether your server is private or a public server. Um, BattleEye, I have it disabled on our server simply because um, everybody who plays with me, I trust. They're not going to be hacking or, or cheating or anything like that at all. Um, but of course, if you're running a public server, um, definitely run it on one. Um, verify signatures is basically your key checking. Do you want to make sure that everybody joining your server has the exact mods that is required for the server? Um, having it leaving on zero, again, my group has their own mod collection through Play with 6 and Armor 3 Sync, so we don't really have a problem with people joining with incorrect mods. Um, but again, if you if your group isn't as organized or something like that, you, you or you have a lot of um, very casual players joining with mods and stuff like that, you can leave Verify Signatures to 2. Have it as either 0 or 2. Um, you know, have, yeah, have it as either 0 or 2. Um, and uh, but bear in mind that if one PBO or any type of mod is, is incorrect, players will get kicked. But it does it does it does prevent your server from getting uh, errors spamming on it for people having incorrect stuff. Um, kick duplicate. I'm not entirely sure. I think that has more to do with um, it, it's to do with the player ID. But I think it's more to do with pirated versions of the game. Um, I don't have anybody in our group having that problem there. But because my server has a has a password on it and I play with people I trust, I can turn all the security off because it's just an extra layer of reasons why people are going to get kicked from the server. Uh, everything under this, probably from a rented server, isn't any really anything you're going to have to worry about. This is stuff you can use if you do have an a, a individual dedicated machine, but it's not something you really have to worry about. Um, so anyway, go through at will. Um, you can you can edit it however you want. Um, I'll put a link in the description, or in fact, this is the link here to the... Um, you know, more parameters and stuff like that from the Bohemia Interactive website that you can actually add in there. Um, and actually, if you do actually just have a read of it, actually all makes perfect sense to you there. But if you, I'll add this uh, in the description of the video if you want to go through and edit more of your server config. Um, after this, um, whenever you're probably going editing stuff uh, with a server also, I should have said, you need to make sure your server is stopped. You don't want it running and trying to edit and stuff like that. Um, the second thing I'll touch on really quickly is your Steam update. Um, by clicking on the Steam update button, this is going to update your version of Armour to the latest version. It's going to check the Steam Workshop login um, and, and download everything there. The, the beauty about, again, renting a, uh, a dedicated server is that the server is probably going to be in a big server warehouse or a big server center and um you're going to download you know the apex update was nine gigs i think it downloaded it on our server in less than 60 seconds you know so that's really that's that's a really really cool thing i there's there's even people with really fast internet uh usually don't get that kind of speed but there you go there so you can see uh, armor was validated on our server perfectly fine um after that uh we're going to touch on to the command line manager um, now this is basically how you're going to launch your mods um, i'll get into how to um, upload them and update them in a little bit but um, simply by cl clicking on the command line manager uh, you want to come to custom command lines and this is where you're going to have or you know whatever title uh, your, your server has um, your server provider has uh, and this is where you're going to have all your different command lines um, 
again if your server just runs the same mission over and over again um, you're not going to need to have a whole bunch of uh, different ones but my group runs everything from um, Operation Trebuchet to Iron Front to Escape Missions, Tactical Realism, and of course Total Vanilla. Uh, and we have Basic here, which is just uh, CBA and Task Force Radio um, that we've been using for the Apex campaign. Um, anyway, to obviously start a new one, uh, click New here, uh, give it a name. Once it decides to once it decides to load, give it a name. Make sure you tick this box. If you don't tick this box, it won't be saved. Um, and tick world is empty, so you want the server to boot up as quick as possible. Um, this is where you put all your mod all your mod names in here. So um, you basically need to put each mod one after the other with no spaces with these. Uh, whatever the hell these are called in between. I'm sure someone in the comments is going to say uh, with, with, with these in between here. Um, the very last one doesn't need one, but I like to keep it there anyway because it allows me to add and remove mods very, very easily. Um, afterwards, I don't have to worry about the, uh, the colons. Also add your mods under server mod, not under normal mod. This has been changed recently. Normally it was just a, an empty mod slot there. Um, so uh, another thing that you want to do here is make sure your spelling is totally perfect. If your spelling is out of whack, um, you're going to have server hanging. The server will hang in and have problems and things like that. Uh, anyway, of course, once you're done, click save uh, and it will save as your group here uh, to simply change between the different uh, mod collections. Just click select and uh, and away you go and you can, you can choose your different... Uh, you know, if we want to do run tactical realism, I can click uh, click select here, and it should uh, it should change the um, should change the collection here. So there you can see now it's uh, in in black. Then if I click games and click start, it will it will boot the server. Now there, here's one really uh, thing I like about streamlined servers that you won't get with all providers is a web console. By clicking on the web console, it will actually open up um, effectively the server and actually show you it booting up. Um, this is a really, really helpful tool um, if you actually have a mod problem and the server is hanging. So of course, your server is just as fragile as anything else. Um, if there's one PBO out of whack or if there's one one little problem, uh, you know, mod conflicting with another problem, um, it will your server will actually be... Uh, will be have cause to hang and it won't actually make its way all the way to connected to the steam servers um, which means people will just be sitting there waiting for you to serve it, waiting for your server to start up and things like that um, so I really really like to have this feature um, I can always make sure that the server is, has booted up without any errors although you know this is really just due to mods but none of this stuff actually affects the game um, it also actually allows me to watch my logs in real time so if I think a player is logging in with incorrect mods or if there's something going wrong um, recently we removed the bloodlust mod because it was just spamming way too many errors and just bogging down our server everyone was wondering why um, the frame rates were so bad uh, as we, we I basically used the uh, the web console to, to find out that it was the bloodlust mod um, other than that, uh, the mod manager is a re really, really helpful tool. Again, the amount of mods that are enclosed or that you actually have access to um, will depend on the server provider that you run with. Now, Streamline servers have a really well flushed out mod manager. Um, so you can see everything from cup terrains to cup units, vehicles and weapons. I can actually just download and install just straight away really, really quickly here. Um, in fact, I think Cup Terrain's core being the largest mod in this whole page, I think close to six gig, maybe more, um, will actually download in probably less than three minutes. Um, so this obviously frees up your resources as a server manager to um, not have to upload your entire mod collection yourself. You can actually come in here, just click install, and away you go. Um, one really good thing with Streamline servers as well uh, is they keep their mods up to date pretty well. Um, usually by the time I find out that there's an update to Ace or Cup Terrains or something like that, I can come in here and there's already an update here. Um, there are other ways of doing it, but what I like to do is click uninstall and then click reinstall install and it will it will download and install the um, the latest version uh, again they have other content mods like iron front uh, messy vehicles messy weapons uh, operation trebuchet which is is which of course is the halo mod 
um, Unsung Vietnam mod. Um, I'm not quite sure why they still have all an armor train pack because that's totally broken. I think it's for Epoch, I guess. Uh, then they've got a whole bunch of other maps. Australia, Bornholm, Essica, uh, Amrali Island, Namalsk, and Nap Island. Um, simply click install uh, and it will download uh, the latest version. Um, then they've actually got missions. Uh, so again, if you want to run an Invade and Annex server, uh, Alter Slive, Wasteland, Epoch, or Exile, um, it's all here just for you to, to just click and download the latest version. And as you can see, they actually don't download them off any site except for the um, actual official websites by the creators. Um, moving down, of course, they've got even more. They've got the RHS uh, mods. They've got Ace, uh, Alive, CBA, and Task Force Radio. They do not have Acre. Uh, I guess Acre isn't particularly popular. Um, but again, you can upload if your mods that you want to run aren't included in this list, you can, of course, upload your own, which I will show you how to do now. So again, once you come back to this page here, uh, Log View is going to run you through all your hard paper logs. Um, so it's basically whatever comes through the web console gets saved on here. Uh, file Manager is a way of uploading files to the server, but it's actually probably the worst way of doing it. And I'll show you a way using your FTP address in a minute um, to uh, effectively upload your mods in the, the quickest way possible. Um, Updates, I believe, is to update your mods. I've never really used it. Um, I prefer just to delete the mod and then re-download it again rather than doing an update. It seems a lot more clean for me. Um, current activity and status is going to just sort of show you who's on the server, how much resources they're using and stuff like that. Again, this part here usually tells me enough about what's going on, um, provided you have the auto refresh turned on. Um, game tracker banners are just going to give you banners to that you can put in your signatures, put on your websites and stuff like that. Just simply copy and paste that onto your website and, um, and you'll have it there. Although I do believe you need to go and sign up for game trackers or whatever. Uh, first of all, uh, so they can get access to your data. Um, database data is not too sure. I've never used it before. Um, anyway, so probably what you're waiting for is how to get your mods up there. How do I get 2,000 files or 20 gig worth of mods onto your server? Well, it's basically using the FTP service that your server provider is giving you. Um, I use a program called FileZilla. Uh, I'll put the link in the description to download FileZilla. Um, but basically, all you need to do is, uh, is run FileZilla. And uh, it's pretty, pretty fast pretty fast program. Uh, simply open your site manager. Then what you want to do is put in the IP, the port, um, your username and password uh, into your server and of course connect to your server. And then uh, Blamo, you've actually, you, you can actually see your server and then all the files and the mods in here. Um, now by using FileZilla you can actually drag you can actually drag and drop stuff from either side. So this is your computer here, and this is the server on this side here. But what I particularly like to do is actually use, um, is actually like to use uh, Windows Explorer and actually just drag files across. Um, so basically all you need to do is drag, you know, as an example, if I want to drag uh, STGI over to the server, I can just do that and uh, you can, uh, you can set it up whether you want the source file newer or whatever there, but um, of course, if it isn't on the server, this won't pop up anyway. Um, but there you go there. So now STGI has been uploaded. Um, why I like to do this is you can actually do files on mass. So I can actually click top to bottom, drag them all over. Um, whereas the file browser that you're going to get on the website can only upload four files at a time. So if you can imagine uploading 2,000 files, at least in my mods collection, in our mod collection, how long that's going to take if I have to do it four files at a time. Um, anyway, uh, so all you have to do is drag those over there for your mods. Um, one thing I like to do is once they're on the server, I like to right click them, right click on them, go rename, and then copy exactly how it's been written. And then when I'm writing my command line, uh, I actually like to just paste it in and then put your, your semicolon after a type of thing, but this is going to take a little while. Um, other than that, looking on the, looking on your, what you ha now have is your server, uh, everything you have under uh, MP missions, this is where you're going to put all your missions. Uh, whether these are ones that you've created in the Eden editor uh, or ones that you have, um, 
I downloaded off the workshop, so you can see I've got some uh, Wolfpack missions I've downloaded off the workshop, some deathmatch missions and stuff like that. Um, this is where you put all your missions, basically. Very, very simple. Um, and then probably the last thing you're going to want to do is set up the difficulty on your server. Uh, now, with armor, there's four levels of difficulty, recruit, regular, veteran, and custom. Um, for me, personally, I find uh, regular is obviously way too easy. Um, no, sorry, recruit is way too easy. Regular, I find a little bit too boring and not quite challenging enough, but I find veteran for most people, particularly new players, is too hard. So I actually create a custom difficulty in between. This is mostly for AI and, and users. Um, anyway, after you've started the server one time, uh, come into users under profile, under users, under TCA game, and you're looking for this one here, which is TCA game dot armor three profile. And what you want to do is drag and drop it to your desktop. Okay. So now I need to, I need to find it now. There it is over here. So if I actually open up this here, um, upon opening it for the first time, you actually won't have any of this. You'll just have this stuff here at the top. Um, now I'll copy and paste this stuff here. Well, actually just down to here uh, for your custom difficulty in the description of the channel. Uh, sorry, in the description of the video. And what this is doing here is actually setting up the custom difficulty setting. Now, unfortunately, you can't customize, as far as I know, you can't customize the recruit, regular, and veteran difficulty, only the custom difficulty. Um, now, effectively what it is, you need to change these settings here to either zero, one, or two. Um, rather than going through what they all mean and what the values need to be, I'll put a link in the description to the Armour 3 uh, difficulty um, the Armour 3 difficulty uh, settings. Armour 3 difficulty settings in the channel there. So if you actually go into here, you'll actually see what they all mean. Right, so you can see basically Detected Minds shows the icon around there, what they are by default. Um, and then you can actually scroll down here and it will actually show you effectively what the figures mean. So uh, my my group personally we run group indicators as zero because we use shack tag group indicators but if you want to run a little bit more realistic you can have it set to one so they have a limited distance or you can have them set to two which is probably what you're more familiar with which is the hexagon around the players all the time um, but you can you can set it up how you want you can go through here um, this basically by having a custom difficulty setting uh, if you actually come down here uh, a custom difficulty setting really allows you to customize how much of a challenge the enemy are going to be. Um, coming down here to the custom AI level is going to be your skill and precision. Um, again, I turn the skill level up. This, from what I understand, is more to do with them covering each other, effectively their intelligence. Um, are they going to use tactics? Are they going to move around? Are they going to be a little bit more? Um, are they going to be able to spot you easier and stuff like that? So this basically ranges from uh, zero uh, all the way up to 1.0. Okay, so I have it set as 0.85, so 85% difficulty, basically. Um, precision of the AI is, again, set between zero and one. Um, I have it set to the regular uh, difficulty setting, which by default is um, 0.5. Um, veteran is set to, I believe, 0.8. Um, so what I like to do is I like to have the AI set to effectively half their bullets are going to be pretty accurate. Um, and then that way that's going to allow me as a mission maker as Zeus to put in a lot more enemy, create a little bit more intense firefights for smaller groups of people without completely wiping them out. Um, and that makes just for a little bit more exciting missions rather than um, really uh, aim body AI because I'm pretty sure most of you have been experienced with that. Uh, anything under active keys that gets automatically put in by your server, so don't worry about that. Um, it's really just from here up that you need to copy and paste in here, and then of course change this to how you how you like uh, how you like using that difficulty settings. Um, other than that, guys, that's really about it. Um, with updates with your with your server. Um, I prefer to delete them and then re-upload the latest version. You can. Um, just override them and stuff like that, but that can get a bit messy on your server. Uh, again, before uploading too many mods, check with your server provider to make sure um, 
you know you have allocated data space uh, allocated hard drive space most armor 3 servers will allow you to put as many mods on your server as you like provided they actually provided the data is armor related um, or whatever game you're, you're renting your server off um, other than that guys if you have any questions please let them know please put them in the comments below uh, if you like this video hit the like button if you didn't like the video click the dislike button um, and if there's anything any other tutorials or anything like that at all that you'd like me to run through please let me know in the comments below um, other than that guys thanks very much 